So let me start by saying this. It is food season. And I am coming out of food season early for you guys. Only for you guys. Because what we don't pay attention to during food season is just how much we eat. Yes, I am talking about Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and everything in between there. Even Halloween. I even put Halloween in there because me personally, I start food season on Halloween because my birthday's the day before it. So I have that birthday meal, then I have all the candy, and then I just accept the fact that I'm going to be eating during that time. It's going to be a horrible backslide, but I know once January gets here, I'll be fine and get back in the gym. I know that I can do that. I get it. I know I can because my job kind of dictates it. So I can kind of afford to do that little backslide at the end of the year. Whereas some of us really can and we don't even realize how much we're backsliding during that time frame because we as Americans think about eating as fun. We don't think about eating for fuel. We think about eating for fun. We get together on these holidays to get together to fellowship and have fun with one another. And one of the staples of that fun each holiday season is food. During Thanksgiving, I don't know if you guys know just how many calories we consume on Thanksgiving by itself. It can be anywhere from 1,400 to 2,800 calories per plate. You're going to be looking at almost 10 to 1,400 calories on your plate just for Thanksgiving for the average American. And the thing is, some of us have that Thanksgiving food twice in one day. We eat at noon and then we're eating again at 6. That same food that we ate at, at, at lunchtime, because it's really lunch, but that same food there, eating it again at the end of the day, that is nearly a pound of food that we've consumed because it's 3,600 calories for a pound and you're looking at 24 to 2,800 calories that you're looking at for two plates that you fix. That's not including your breakfast. That's not including your desserts. We're just talking about the plates of food, the ham, the turkey, the dressing, the, the biscuits, the gravy, the potato, all of that stuff. That's all we're talking about there. But let's get away from that. That was Thanksgiving. We had those plates of Thanksgiving on that Friday, the Saturday. Hopefully by Sunday, we were about done with it. But we had about three to four days of that Thanksgiving food. And honestly, that was probably about almost four to five pounds. I know I got mine. I have my holiday handles going right now because I ate pretty good at Thanksgiving. But then after that, you would think that we'd have a break. But as soon as Thanksgiving is over and December hits, we start having these holiday parties. So for the past few weekends, all of, lots of us have been going out to these holiday parties and all these sugary snacks. Think that, oh, it's light, it's not gonna be too bad. But we don't realize that one cookie, depending on the type of cookie, you could be looking at anywhere from 100 to maybe 200, maybe 300 calories in just one cookie. Now, the thing is, we go to that holiday, the, the holiday spread, and we grab up two or three cookies here, and then there might be a brownie here, and who knows what else is at this part? Just a little finger food that we're just like, it's light. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. But we have this full little miniature plate that we're eating off of, and then about an hour or so later before the party's over, we go and fill that plate up again, and then it's probably that third plate that we fill up to take home with whatever is left over. So we don't pay attention to it, even though it's not the heavy, heavy food that Thanksgiving is, the big meals, it's still a good little chunk of calories. And by the end of the holiday parties, right before Christmas, we probably gained another three pounds, two, three pounds, depending on how much you're eating at those holiday parties, maybe even four, because we're still not even factoring in the rest of your week. We're not even thinking about that stuff. We're just talking about these holiday parties that go on during food season. And then we have the granddaddy of them all in a couple of days, Christmas. Now, let me give Christmas some credit. It's not like Thanksgiving the way we're gonna sit here and eat, 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 eat all day. No, Christmas isn't like that. We have a typically a nice Christmas breakfast, and then we go into lunch, we have a light little lunch, and then we have a nice Christmas meal at the end of the day. The three meals during the day like we're supposed to, maybe some snacks in between. So what's wrong with that? It's the food at that Christmas dinner. Now, unlike Thanksgiving, where it's going to be that set spread, but we, everybody is pretty much knows that it's going to be the turkey dressing type combo and all the sides that go along with that. Christmas is a little bit different. Christmas is done different all over the place at everyone's home. 
and you never know what foods you're gonna have at that Christmas dinner table. Because on top of just not knowing what your family is gonna do, every family being different, it's usually a potluck type thing. Everybody brings in a dish and you have food from this person's house and this person's house. And you have all these different foods and you have no idea how many calories are coming in because it's from all over the place. You don't know how everybody's cooking. But on top of that, Christmas, we usually have heavier meals. That you usually see the pastas come out. I remember my favorite thing to eat every Christmas, lasagna. I knew the only time we're having lasagna is at Christmas. And lasagna is ridiculously heavy. We all know how many carbs are in just a little small piece of lasagna. And that's usually where it comes out. It comes out at Christmas, along with other pastas and and all these high carb dishes that the carbs that we eat at Christmas are typically so much worse for us than the carbs that we consume at Thanksgiving. Because Thanksgiving, like I said, it's a general spread. We know what we're gonna get there. You never know what you're gonna get at that potluck Christmas dinner. It could be a little bit of everything. And that little bit of everything leads to those holiday handles. So through, we'll get through Christmas. Then there's still one more. We still gotta get through New Year's. New Year's typically a little bit better on the food side. We start, we're we starting to really wind down from all of the over holiday eating that we do. And then, and then comes the day. In this case, I don't think it's gonna be the first because the first being in the middle of the week, I honestly think it's gonna be January 6th this year because that is the Monday, the first Monday of the new year. And everybody's gonna be in a place like this. Ready to lose weight, ready to, burn off all that weight because on average, I told you guys Thanksgiving, you're looking at almost about four to five pounds. It's not the amount of carbs that are in the food that we're eating, but it's just the sheer volume of the food that we eat during that time. And we eat that same food for about two to three days. Then we have those holiday parties. We're looking at about three straight weeks of holiday parties, some of us, for work, for friends, for family, whatever the case may be. Holiday parties, another, let's be nice about this one two to three pounds, what is it? two to three pounds. Then we got that Christmas dinner, the food, so much worse for us. So we're looking at Christmas day, probably about two pounds, pound to two pounds on Christmas day. And we have that Christmas food for maybe a day or so. Cause most everybody takes that home. It does, it's not gonna stay in the house as well as Thanksgiving will. So by the end of Christmas, we're looking at maybe two to three. So we'll be generous with that, another two to three. So we're looking at three to five, two to three, two to three. And that's, again, not including your daily eating habits that you may already have that aren't so good. Because again, during the holiday season, all bets are off, this is the only time that I really get to eat bad food. So I do have my burgers. I have, I have all my, my Philly cheese steaks, the pizzas, all those bad foods. This is the time of year that I indulge in it because can't play golf in the cold, Spartan races, I'm not running in the cold. I just take advantage of the fact that it's time to enjoy myself, enjoy some food. And when you factor in those calories along with those holiday calories, if you're anything like me, I have gained a solid 15 pounds since my last race. My last race, I was down to 205 and now I'm up to 220. So. I got my 15 in this time frame, and it's so easy to do it. I just told you how. Just about half of that is from the holidays themselves, not including everything else throughout the week. So in a two month span, 15 pounds, that is absurd, but we don't pay it any attention because it's the holidays, it's the holidays. But the thing is when we come in here in January and we expect to lose all that weight like this, because we gained it just that quick, but the thing is, it's not gonna work the same trying to get it off. There's so much more that has to go into that because I'm gonna tell you guys this now. I say it to everyone I work with, especially when it comes to weight loss, you're not strong enough to lose weight. If you weren't exercising before food season, during food season, then after food season, you're not gonna be strong enough to lose weight. It's just, it does not go together. You have to be strong to lose weight. Weight is work to get it off. And I'm gonna prove that. And that's why I am stopping my holiday eating. I'm letting go of my holiday handles early and I'm gonna start getting in shape this week. For the next two weeks leading up to January 6th, I'm working out every day except for Sundays, I'm not working out on Sundays, but 
every day doing some type of workout for at least an hour. And I'm gonna show you guys just how much weight I lose just in this two week time frame. Because what's gonna happen in January, y'all are gonna come in here, everybody's gonna be ripping and roaring, ready to get in shape and get strong and lose this holiday weight. And you're going to get hurt that first day. You're gonna walk out, you're gonna walk in like this and you're gonna walk out like this. And it's because your body is not ready for the shock that it's about to get from the trainer that you get or the workout video you're gonna do or whatever it is you do for your exercise, it is not ready. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna come back a day or so later. You're not gonna do back to back to back to back days like I'm gonna do. You're gonna do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or maybe a Tuesday, Thursday. You're gonna do some type of offset schedule to three to two days a week. And from that, so many of us are gonna be exhausted and we're gonna be like this walking out of the gym, like, oh my gosh, I can't lift my leg, I can't lift my arm, I can't sit up straight because my body just hurts. And you're gonna keep coming back for about two weeks, maybe even to that three weeks uh, point, and you're gonna be like, this weight isn't going anywhere. I'm doing all this work and I'm not losing the weight. And it's because the exercises that you're gonna be doing, they're not enough to make you lose weight that fast like that. And I'm gonna prove that to you on, I don't know what day is it gonna be? What day is it gonna be? I'm not sure what day it's gonna be this week, but I'm gonna show you exactly why you can't lose all that weight in here with that hour workout you're gonna do with your trainer. Because again, you're not strong enough, and I'm gonna prove that later this week. But until then, until then, we're gonna get a quick workout in. Now this is my basic workout that I have just about all of my clients do, some variation of this workout that I'm about to show you guys. I call it a circle. It's really a circuit, but when I originally showed this to my group of kids that I have, that I was working with, we had to do it, we had a small space, so we had to get in a circle and do this and just circle around in a circle. So I called it circles. Now, what we're going to do today, five exercises. We're gonna do some push-ups, we're gonna do some burpees, we're gonna do what I call Goku walks, but they're really lunges. We're gonna do some planks, and then we're gonna do a little bit of running. Those five exercises, we're gonna, we're gonna do five sets of each of these exercises with a ladder progression. So we're gonna start with two, 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 two. Then we're going back to the first one. Four, 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 six, 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 eight, 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 ten, 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 ten. All the exercises are gonna get 10, uh, 30 reps in, and we're just gonna go through them. We're gonna fly through these. It's gonna be a nice, quick workout. It should take about 15 minutes. It's a, it's a nice, general strength and endurance workout. All the exercises we're doing in this workout are general motion exercises. The push-up motion, the pushing motion that we have to do, pushing a shopping cart or pulling something. The lunges, simulating on a squat. I don't wanna get into squats because that's another video for later on. We're gonna talk about squats later on too. Lunges, it's just another good stability exercise because how many times are we bending down to pick something up? So that lunge is gonna be good, functional for that. Then we're talking about planks. Planks are just amazing for core stability, quad stability, burpees. Now the burpees, I'll be honest. That one is not so much function. It's a combination of body control. You have to have body control to do burpees. And if you don't have that body control, burpees hurt a lot. And then the run, we gotta run, we gotta pick up our feet, move everyday life. So if you can't run and you try to do this workout, it doesn't have to be run, it just be marching. Because some of you won't have this nice, lovely space that I have, so it just might be marching in place for 100 steps at a fast rate, who knows? We'll come up with some type of modification for you guys. But let's get into this workout. We're gonna knock it out. Like I said, it's only gonna be about 15 minutes. Real quick, but it's gonna be a good test of just how strong you are and how much endurance you have. And that alone should let you know what January 6th is gonna be like for so many of us. All right, let's get to it. 